Hi, my name is Milan Marsh. I am a junior at Open High School in Richmond, Virginia, and the title of my project is The Effect of Crayfish on Snail Populations in James River Rock Pools. So keystone predators are very important to the ecosystems they live in. Here are two examples of keystone predators. On the left is a Pythaster starfish, which live in the intertidal zones off the coast of North America. The starfish eat mussels, and when they were experimentally removed by Robert Payne, the number of species there decreased from 15 to 8. Another example is the reintroduction of wolves at Yellowstone National Park. Bringing back these wolves have increased the beaver population, aspen population, and other vegetation within the park. So crayfish are predators in aquatic systems eating plants, mollusks, insects, tadpoles, and fish eggs. We know that predators can have an important impact on species diversity by helping regulate the herbivores, like with the starfish mussel example. So to, to determine the impact that crayfish have on species diversity, my research takes place in two parts. The first part is a field survey using data collected from me and the collaboration of students from Virginia Commonwealth University and University of Richmond. We compared species diversity in pools with and without crayfish while also analyzing the impact that crayfish have on the rock pools and its most common inhabitant, which are snails. In the second part of my experiment, I performed a laboratory experiment to test which snail the crayfish preferred. So here's the setting of our experiment. On the left is a map of Belle Isle, which is located west of downtown Richmond. And on the right is a skyline view of the city from Belle Isle. So this is a close-up of the rock pools. The different colors and shapes just, re just represent which rock pools have already been sampled. So no groups sample the same rock pools. So um, this, this picture shows that rock pools come in all different shapes and sizes and contain a unique diversity of species. While looking at the different plants and animals in the rock pools, we noticed that some rock pools have crayfish and others did not. So here are some of the most commonly found rock pool species. Here we have dragonfly larvae and physa snails, which is one of the rock pool's most, most abundant inhabitant. So my first field question is, is there a relationship between the presence of crayfish and species diversity? My hypothesis is, if there are crayfish present, then species diversity will be increased. My second field question asks, is there a relationship between the presence of crayfish and the abundance of snails? My hypothesis for this is if there are crayfish present, then the abundance of snails will decrease. The two most common snails are physis snails and Pleuroceridae snails. Physis snails are thicker and contain a perculum, which is a gill-like covering, and physis snails are thinner and smaller. So to begin sampling, we started with length, width, and depth, the abiotic factors, and then we sampled the biotic factors, so the type of organism. We took three sweeps of the pool, one on the surface, one on the side, and one at the bottom of the pool. And then we recorded the type and number of each organism present. So here are students sampling at the rock pools and recording their findings. So the first aspect of species diversity that we looked into was species richness. On the x-axis is uh, whether the crayfish is present or not, and on the y-axis is species richness. Out of the 151 pools we looked at, only three pools had crayfish and 148 pools did not have crayfish. And the approximate species richness with crayfish was 5.52 and approximately 5.53 without crayfish. And there was no statistical difference. The second aspect of species diversity that we looked at was species abundance. Again, the x-axis is presence or absence of crayfish, and the y-axis here is species abundance. Um, in pools with crayfish, the um, average species abundance was 73.4 and 69.4 without crayfish, but again, this distance is not statistically significant. So seeing that crayfish had little effect on overall species diversity, we then wanted to specifically see how crayfish impacted its most common prey, which are snails. So on the left is the physis snail, which is the thin-shelled snail. And we can see that the presence of crayfish decreased the average abundance of physis snails. However, this trend was not significant using a one-way ANOVA test. On the right we can, is the Pleuroceridae snail, which is a thicker-shelled snail. And uh, as you can see, the mean abundance of Pleuroceridae snails are increased in the presence of crayfish. And this, this was significant using a one-way ANOVA test. So overall, we still see a 
decreased number of Pfizer, the thin shell snails, and an increased number of Pleuroceridae, the thicker shell snails. So um, for our overall field for our overall conclusion for our field survey was that overall species diversity was similar. However, there were fewer Fisa and more Pleuroceridae snails in pools with crayfish. So this pattern shows that some snails do better in the presence of crayfish while others do worse. To, to test specifically if this is a difference in vulnerability, we performed an experiment in a laboratory setting. So our first field question is, do crayfish prefer the Fisa snails or the Pleuroceridae snails? Our hypothesis for this is that if crayfish are placed in a bucket with both Fisa snails and Pleuroceridae snails, then the crayfish will prefer the Fisa, the thin-shelled snails, as their prey. So um, on the day of our experiment, the undergraduate class at VCU came to help us perform it. For our procedures on the first day, there were three groups, each with a bucket that had one crayfish and 20 Fisa snails, one crayfish and 20 Pleuroceridae snails, and one crayfish, 10 Fisa, and 10 Pleuroceridae snails. Each bucket had water from the river and fake plants to create an artificial environment for the snails. And we had three replicates of each treatment. So this graph shows the percent survival of Fisa in the Fisa alone bucket and Pleuroceridae in the Pleuroceridae alone bucket. So on the x-axis, we have type of snail, and then on the y-axis, we have percent survival. So for the Fisa snails, the thin shell snails, there was only a 20% survival. Well, for the Pleuroceridae snails, the thicker shell snails, there was a 95% survival. So after seeing how each snail was affected by being in the alone bucket, we then wanted to see how each snail benefited from being in the mixed bucket. So on the x-axis, it shows whether or not the snail was in the, or whether it was the snails were in the mixed bucket or if they were in the buckets alone. And on the y-axis, we again have um, percent survival. So um, as you can see, as we just saw from the other graph, uh, when the snails are not in the mixed bucket, the Fisa snail is around 20, and the Pleuroceridae snails are around 95. Um, but when they are in the mixed bucket, the Pleuroceridae survival actually goes down, while the Fisa snail survival actually goes up. So the Fisa snail actually benefit from being in the mixed bucket. So our results show that um, the FISA when alone or, or mixed, they're still more vulnerable. However, when uh, they co-occur, the difference in vulnerability is much less, and the FISA actually become less vulnerable when they're in the mixed bucket. Uh, and one theory that we have about this is the dilution effect. And the dilution effect is the theory that a large group of animals have a better chance of eluding a large animal preying on them than one animal alone. Uh, in our experiment, I think the dilution effect may have, a, have applied between the interaction between the pleurocerids and the crayfish. When the uh, crayfish tried to eat the pleurocerid, it came in contact with its hard shell and its operculum, and uh, it may have diluted the crayfish from eating the physis snail. So uh, the field survey showed an interesting pattern between the type of snail that was abundant and the presence of crayfish. This pattern being that in the presence of crayfish, vices now are decreased and pleuroceridae snails are increased. To further understand this, we performed an in-class experiment, which gave us data to further test if predation was the cause of the interesting pattern that we found in the field. So this, our overall conclusion is that predation <coughs> impacts uh, species abundance uh, of the two most common snail species and that predation could be the cause and that uh, crayfish have a negative impact on the physis snails but not the pleuroceridae snails. Uh, and so based on the discovery that crayfish had a positive impact on the snail species, on one snail species but a negative impact on another snail species, this leads me to want to further research the um, rock pool food web dynamics to further understand the impact of crayfish. Any acknowledgement?